major happened that could make me a gender activist, you know, uh, like a passionate person. It was coming gradually and I was confronting these issues on a daily basis, especially with the men. Um, you know, these things about sexual harassment, the things about abusing women. And, um, and one thing about me, I'm a very disciplined person. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, they always call me old-fashioned, <laughs> old school. But I'm a very disciplined person and I did not allow um, that kind of abuse, um, you know, um, to happen to me. And I will always stand up and say a thing as it is. I might have grown up in a working class in poverty and so on, but there are certain principles and models and values that were inculcated into us by my mom. You know, you might be poor, you might go to school barefoot, but if you have certain principles and values that you hold, you will always be a better person. ANZ has been instrumental in pushing through the quota system to ensure that women are, are in, in leadership positions and also in decision-making structures. I think one of the reasons why we managed to have so many women in Parliament, why we have so many women in, in leadership positions, uh, is because of the pushing through of the quota. The problem is with having so many women in political power in government in state institutions and so on, whether there has been any um, trickle-down effect on uh, the improvement of women at the mass level. So that is the one area that I think it's a problem area, is a major challenge. extent women forget who they're representing. Uh, women in power, they um, tend to want to look at the bigger pictures, bigger picture like, you know, the economic situation. It's much more important than looking at uh, the situation of women at, uh, um, in, in the rural area, how women, they can empower women and so on. I think the critical point would be for women in government to have a base at grassroots level. That is where the power would come from to support those, those women. If, for example, they are having a problem with, just for example, legislation being passed, those women must know that they've got a foundation, they've got a base on to uh, call on to support them in pushing for that legislation. Remember when they actually said that we must have 50-50 at local government level. Um, so there was a big scramble because it meant that men had to give up their positions as councillors. <laughs> they had to give up their positions. I can tell you, uh, men did. They, the NC insisted you give up your position. But the men were not happy. I mean, you had to hear the grumbles and mumbles, like, you know, uh, um, they had to give it that, that, they have to give up the position. And there was a major, a major discussion then ensued around um, whether women are equipped, are women now, <laughs> can they do it, are they prepared, um, um, you know, to be counsellors, shouldn't they embark on a process of education empowerment before they can become counsellors, meaning that the men must remain in that position and then the woman that you've targeted must now first go for three, five years uh, empowerment program and then you elect them. I mean, they came up with all sorts of excuses, you know, the, in order to, to, to retain their, 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 their positions. Other men were saying, like, congratulating themselves and say, you see how gender sensitive we are? Um, um, you know, we've given up our seats for women. I mean, so patronizing. I said, no, uh, you know, I, and, you, and you have to respond to those things every time because it's made in public. For women in power, there's a lot of work to be done to start changing from the organizational, what they call the organizational culture. And that is the hardest part. I know good women that have resigned you know, said, no, I, 
you know, I'm, I don't think that I will want to continue with this because of that kind of situation where um, the situation is just too unbearable. This, you know, that you've been you're sexually harassed, you're being propositioned. Um, if you don't agree to what a leadership is saying, male leadership is saying, then you're going to be victimized. Um, you cannot open up the debate, you cannot confront um, the issue, but if you see uh, um, a leader doing something wrong, you cannot confront it, so they would rather resign. So it's very, very, it's a very difficult uh, a situation f uh, for them. The Beijing Platform of Action was developed um, um, by all women giving input in into it. Um, this is what they want to see um, 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 the UN achieving. This is what they want to see um, governments doing. This is what they want to see, um, you know, progress in, in, in nation states. To a large extent, it has been removed from that mass of women, of the public, sort of public domain um, of um, women in general and it's now located at an institutional level. It's only those that work with these things and um, with this, uh, structure, in these structures, those that work with um, you know, the research and so on, and the so-called experts um, that know the Beijing Platform of Action, know all its chapters and so on. So there has been that separation from the mass movement and women don't know about it. that was there in the 1980s, 1976. I mean, we're all what we call mature women and we're not going beyond. And that experiences are not being passed down to the younger generation of women that is coming in, uh, coming in now, you know, to educate them, to raise consciousness uh, and to develop, uh, you know, them as, as gender activists who would be able to carry on the struggles. So there is going to be a break. So I think we need to get down to um, um, to basics. We need to organize, uh, organize women, we need to mobilize them around and around their real, real issues. Mm -hmm.